After many months of waiting and waiting and waiting, we finally get episode one of RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 5. Let's talk about it. Yo, what's up? I'm Jaded Nerd, and this is my recap, my review, my reaction for RuPaul's Drag Race All-Stars 5, episode one. Y'all already know it's been a super long time. We've been waiting months and months and months. And actually, this was filmed last summer, so... Let's just go ahead and jump right into the workroom entrances. And we had Shea Coulee. Shea Coulee walks in. She's feeling confident. It's something weird, though, about her face because her skin is very smooth and it's almost too smooth. You know how you first start learning how to edit photos and manipulate things like that? And you get a little bit too crazy with the mask and blending everything out. I don't know what it is, whether it's fillers, whether it's just one old chemical peel or something like that. But it's eerie to look at Miss Shea kool -Aid, but she walks in and she's feeling fabulous. Miss Cracker comes in and she's funny. I'm really glad to see Miss Cracker come back into the workroom. I want to see what Miss Cracker's going to bring. She's smart. She's funny. I'm, I'm excited to see her. Alexis Mateo, the vibe that I got from her was sweetheart. I was really glad to see her. Bam. All of that. I'm excited. It's been a super long time. We already know that she's Miss Vanjie's drag mama and all that good stuff. A blast from the past would be kind of cliche, but I'm excited to see what she's going to bring to the competition. Blair St. Clair came in looking like a million bucks and he was giving me very much of bitchy vibes. I'm uptown, socialite. And she's slightly giving me Karen vibes, so I don't know. We want to keep a good eye, a good sad eye on Miss Blair St. Clair, but the vibe is given very much, I'm going to call the police on you because you don't live in my penthouse. But we'll leave it at that for right now with Miss Blair St. Clair. But she looks amazing. I got to give her props for that. Mariah Balenciaga, and all I had to say in my notes is mug. M-U-G, just mug, face, beauty, face. Carter face just that mug that's that's all I kept telling all my friends like yo I'm excited to see Mariah we haven't seen her in a long time yo I love her mug her face is beautiful I'm here for it so it was really good to see her walk into the workroom and it's like that mug lit it up I'm excited so shout out to Mariah Balenciaga Miss India Farrah pretty much gave me extra The, the makeup was dramatically extra. The entrance was extra. The backstory is extra. The drag is in a contact sport is extra. It's just extra, extra, extra. And I almost kind of forgot about her up until that point. But yeah, she I guess she's back on the scene. She's here. And, and I want to see what she's going to bring to the competition. Juju B comes in giving us executive fish realness. She's giving out on 51% of this company and yeah, okay, giving you 104 Star Creations, um, Spectra Fashions, Bold and the Beautiful, okay, she gave me very much of that and I love me some Juju B and um, yeah, I'm here for it. So it was really good to see her walk through the door. Derek Berry, I wrote in my notes, eyebrows. And I think that was the only thing because it was Britney. Derek Berry came out as Britney as those blocked eyebrows that Michelle Visage clocked you on your season when you was on there, girl. And you still haven't fixed them eyebrows. You still giving Britney. So I just wrote eyebrows. I guess that's shade, but sue me. Mayhem Miller comes in and the first thing I got was a blow up doll. From the expression, the peekaboo eyes. Just the, the, the way that the mouth was fixed, the padding, everything was giving me very much of, um, you know, blow up doll child. I think Mayhem Miller is super talented. The skin is amazing. That complexion is life. But child, you was giving me blow up doll tease. Real talk down to the sex shop. Uh, this is all no tea, no shade, girl. Yeah. And last but not least, Angina was giving me very much um deity, very much some kind of ornate something. I don't know. It was ostentatious, it was flashy, it was just grandiose. I really enjoyed it. Again, Angina is another one I'm really glad to see um, on here. I haven't seen her in a while, so shout out to her. So Rue comes in, welcomes the queens, looking very much like Dante from Devil May Cry, and they go right into the reading challenge. They waste no time. The standouts for me was 
Derek Berry going in on India Farah. I mean, dragging for filth. And Juju B was dragging everybody. Blair Sinclair was reading, but again, it was giving me bitchy vibes. It was giving me very much, I'm going to call the police on you because this is not your penthouse. Those kind of vibes, but it was a, a tie between Juju B and Blair St. Clair. So this week's main challenge is going to be the variety show. It's going to be inspired by the work, the world Vegas show that Rue has. This week's guest judge is none other than Ricky Martin. So Ricky Martin did a walkthrough with Rue when they did the reading challenge. He's on the panel. Cute as can be. Rue is excited. The queens are excited. Everybody's excited. So that was really cool. So Alexis Mateo was the first one to come out. I liked her costume. I liked her vibe. I liked the show that she gave. It was really good energy. I almost kind of felt like she can just smile and be happy. And we're going to be happy along with her. So Ricky was feeling it. She was feeling her fantasy. Really good. A really good start to this talent show. Shea kool comes out and does a pole dance looking very good. Makeup is on point. Hair polished. Sexy. Seductive. But it was a pole dance and it was a meaty tuck. Y'all let me know if y'all saw it or not. And I love me some Shea Kool-Aid, but if you're going to be all like here from here to Yaya with the legs, girl, you can't be having no meaty tuck. So I don't know if y'all clocked that, but I definitely did. Mayhem Miller came out and wore very nice contacts. And that was pretty much all I could get. I couldn't hear her lyrics. I really didn't get a, an understanding or a grasp of what she was saying or what the song was about. I just remembered them eyes. So we're just going to say really nice contacts. Shout out to you, Mayhem Miller. Mariah Balenciaga gave a spoken word, an artistic impression. It was very much Black Lives Matter. It was very much, and, and, and ironic because this was last summer, but this was speaking to what's happening now. It was woke. It was very, very, just, I, I, I lived for it. I was here for it. It had substance. Her mug was just sitting. It was everything. So shout out to you, Mariah. You did that, girl. You did that. Miss Cracker came out as Pickle Rick from Rick and Morty. And that's as soon as I saw the pickle, I, I thought of Pickle Rick. I'm like, she's Pickle Rick. And then she came out and it was very Playboy Bunny. And it was like this little burlesque kind of funny, sexy, campy kind of thing or whatever. Very much on brand for Miss Cracker. So shout out to you. For being Pickle Rick and Miss Cracker, you did that. That was funny. Shout out to you, girl. Blair St. Clair came out looking like a million bucks again, and she sang slightly off key. Um, how would Aretha say beautiful gowns? Just beautiful gowns. Angina came out and, and did a root medley. And that was fine, but... That was pretty much all she did. She got out there, did a Rue medley of Rue songs and shimmied and shaked. But I, I'm like, are you going to lip sync? Are you going to perform? Do you have any original music? Did you get stage fright? Like, what's really going on? So I don't know, Angina, but I really wasn't feeling that. You kind of dropped the ball on that one a little bit. Derek Berry came out and did impressions dressed as Britney with those eyebrows. Juju B sang the house down. Sang the house down. Emotion giving me very much of the voice, giving me very much of the finale. American Idol, I was here for it. Again, face is sitting, body is on point. I really enjoyed Juju B. India Affair came out and basically gave us the spin cycle down to the laundromat. You know how you go down to the laundromat, you go down to the basement and you get to put it on one old spin cycle and they get to spin it around. You know, the old washing machines, they get to spin it around and it's spinning and it's moving around, but it's spinning at the same time. It's not staying on its axis. That's what India Affair gave me. Very much of not on her axis, spinning the earth, 45 degree tilt, spinning around. I, I don't know, but yeah, that's pretty much what I got. Spin cycle. Overall, a pretty decent talent show. Uh, Rue makes some decisions, and the safe queens are going to be Rache, Juju B, Blair, and Mariah. I'm like, okay. I actually thought that the winner was in the group of the safe queens. I actually thought that it could have been between Mariah, Balenciaga, and it could have been between Juju B. If you really want to talk about talent and just doing something different, I really felt like those two were the ones that were top queens, but 
Anyway, the bottom queens and the top queens consisted of Alexis Mateo, Miss Cracker, India Farah, Derek Berry, Mayhem Miller, and Angina. These were the tops and the bottoms, okay? India Farah ends up being this week's top all-star. I don't know. But we're already seeing that the producers were kind of pushing Derek Berry versus India Farah, so maybe that's what that was. The lip syncs and eliminations are done differently this year. In the past, you would have the top two, they would pick a queen, and then whoever won, they sent that queen home. How they're doing it this year is you have one top queen, and she competes against a lip sync assassin from a previous season, but they don't know who it is until they reveal her for that week. So the top queen picks somebody to go home, and then the lip sync assassin takes the lipstick of the queen that the rest of the girls pick, so the remaining queens vote. The top queen picks one, the remaining queens pick one. And if the lip sync assassin wins, then the queen that was voted on goes home. So anyway, long story short, we get India Farah and we get Miss Evie Oddly. And you're already thinking, all right, bet, this is really good. They're lip syncing, Evie's doing reveals, contortion, she's giving a Cirque du Soleil, face, facials, all of that. She actually wins. And between the two bottom queens, it was going to be Derek Barry and Mayhem Miller. So the queens voted and they all voted for, for Derek Barry. So, so long, Derek Barry. So long, Brittany. So long, eyebrows. I mean, a lot of people felt like, why are we get there anyway? I'm being a little bit shady, but it's like, girl. You were here briefly and now you're gone. And I have to say that I really like how they're doing this because for so many seasons, you might get one or two really, really good lip syncs. Or you might get one iconic one. And then a lot of them are like ho-hum. They're very, very basic. They're not very entertaining. And this, at least on paper, looks like you get a good lip sync every week because you're getting an assassin that's going to come back. So you know they know how to lip sync. They have an advantage because they know about the song, they're preparing and all of this. So it makes it exciting. It gives us performances for this week one lip sync. I was happy for it. I was excited. It gave me some drama. It gave me some entertainment value. I was here for it. It was nice to see Evie Otley. It was nice to be introduced again to India Fair and, and get to know her more than being picked up by Mimi I'm first. So I'm happy. A good first episode of All Stars 5. It's too early to pick a winner right now, but I do have some favorites. I'm really rooting for Mariah because I love her mug. I think she's amazing and great. I'm excited to see what Miss Cracker does. I love me some Juju B and I love me some Angina. Like this is a really good mix of fan favorites and, and sentimental favorites and, and all of that. And, and I don't know, but just Shea Kool-Aid, I, I'm trying to figure out what's going on because that must be one old fierce chemical peel because that face is slick and smooth, almost disconcerting. But look, how did you enjoy the episode? Are you excited to get RuPaul's Drag Race back? Let me know who you're rooting for. Who's your favorite queen? Do you think we're going to have a villain? Do you think we're going to have a good versus evil kind of storyline? Drop everything in the comments section below. I want to say thank y'all for checking out the review. If you can, please. Throw a like on the video, subscribe, and share. It is greatly appreciated. I am Jaded Nerd. I'll talk to y'all next time.